Coming up, what's your work situation like? Dr. Jody Sambra shares how different working environments and scenarios these days are putting pressure on stress levels. That's coming up. Welcome back. Joining us with coping strategies for work-related stress as a result of the pandemic, please welcome from Vancouver, British Columbia, psychologist Jody Sambra. Hello, Jody. Hi, Marilyn. Lovely to see you. Nice to see you too. I always like to ask people in the health business, and you're a mental health practitioner, how have you been coping during this time? Wonderful question. Well, I am a human being, first and foremost, uh, before being a psychologist. And, you know, like most people, I've gone through a bit of a roller coaster of emotions over the last really now five months and, and, you know, started with fear and worry and some anxiety. I'm the CEO of a small startup company. And so my small little business got impacted, you know, as most small business has. And so going through processes like reducing hours and trying to think of how your company's going to survivor they're stressful things and i also now i think like many people over the last couple of months have started to get adjusted into this kind of new state and and feel like things are much better now than they were a few months ago you know i feel very fortunate that i have purpose and that i have a radio show mm -hmm. and a television show and that is it continued on but i do feel terribly for those that have lost their jobs very painful yeah, and that, you know, probably one of the biggest impacts that we're seeing, of course, in these early months is is the the real impact that has on, I mean, first and foremost, finances. And we know if we, you know, if we were speaking five months ago before COVID, I would be saying, well, a third of Canadians are under significant financial stress. And so that has already been where we've been at. And now you think of the level of amplification for so many people um, where really they're having consideration like how am I going to, um, you know, feed my kids or pay rent? And these are things that we're seeing very broadly um, and a real impact on, you know, of course, um, just the basic necessities of life. But then also, as you said, like meaning and purpose and that structure and that social connection that we get, you know, we all need and every culture and society will tell us a reason for being right, a reason that we get up in the morning. Right. Um, and right. for many of us, you know, work is a big part of that. We spend a lot more waking hours at work than we do doing other things. That's true. And we now have a definition and a great respect for essential workers. I mean, that's been extremely stressful for them. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm the sister of a principal, a high school principal, and the sister of a nurse. And so, you know, essential workers, my goodness, ha, you know, how grateful are we all for all the work that they're doing? Um, but so many challenges there, right? For many people, there's you know, certainly, and we've seen this loud and clear, is so much pride that so many have had in being able to, you know, serve. And, and we talk about meaning and purpose and, and do things that are ensuring health and safety and security of us in our most routine activities, right? Like grocery shopping or getting the mail, yeah. things that we never even right. thought about before. But also you think about the mental health impacts, right? People are stuck. They often don't have options for whether they go to work or not. And a whole bunch of other level of fear of exposing oneself to the virus, which they could then potentially take home to loved ones. And you think all these layers for essential workers that really make my heart go out to the myriad challenges. For sure, for sure. We've learned so much in the last five months, for sure. Now, we're going to talk about solutions to promote our mental health and well-being. You, uh, first point, which I love, is that you say focus on what you can control. Yeah, so a lot of wisdom in the very famous phrase from the serenity prayer, right? Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Right, right. And that's what we have to focus on and solicit support. So many of us are very afraid to ask for help because of perhaps pride. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things. I mean, we have, there's shame, right? We might feel like, oh, if I'm not taking care of things as well as I should, or everybody else looks like they're functioning okay, right? We have this very skewed perception of how other people um, are doing, and that really can help us um, internalize, right? And we don't share the stresses, and we know that load, the emotional load that we carry of virtually any stressor in life can 
truly be shared when we have people in our environment that we're connecting with and truly authentically connecting with, right? Being able to talk about the things that are really right. challenging um, and impacting yeah. us. Sharing that information, that always feels good to do that. Uh, use a, a solutions-focused lens. What do you mean by that? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of us have been venting a lot lately, and, and there's a place, I'm a psychologist, there's lots of room, you know, we know it feels good, right? You vent for a little bit, and you let it out, and you let out the frustration, but here's what we know from the science, is there's a shelf life on the value of venting for the sake of venting, and what we want to do is shift our mindset and our actions to be oriented toward doing something different, so a solution that can help in some, sometimes even micro way, the challenge that we're being faced with, rather than just getting stuck in venting and, and ruminating about it. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. And then you talk about daily gratitude. How do you how do you do daily gratitude, Jody? Oh, I what love to talk about how yeah, so gratitude, first and foremost, the science around gratitude is tremendously strong. Uh, the way that I practice it, I'm a morning snoozer, so I'm a forced morning person. So I always get in at least one or two snoozes in the morning. And while I'm in the midst of my snooze is where I find three things, big or small, that I have gratitude for. Um, and so I just plant those in my head and tr I try to remember them through the day. And lately, I've had a, you know a number of things on repeat. One, being very grateful of having a pantry full of food, being very grateful grateful I can work from home and being very grateful that um, I live in a country where we have all the running amenities, water, electricity. And I think like right. things like that are some of my mm -hmm. most predominant ones over the last number of months, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like this. Uh, this is a reminder that it's not as bad as you might think, but we also have to be mindful with our thoughts. We do. And, you know, our perception really is our reality, Marilyn. And we can create tragedies just like that. In 60 seconds, you yeah. and I could kill off, kill off everybody we know and love in our brain, right? And, and similarly, we can, like, imagine all kinds of wondrous things. And so our thoughts, research will tell us that we have tens of thousands of thoughts a day. And if those are oriented toward negative or, um, you know, kind of unhelpful, emotional oriented thoughts, that affects our psyche in a really significant way. Mm -hmm. And we can control our thoughts. We can change our thoughts. Know that eventually things will go back to normal. It might be different normal, but you know, yeah, I mean, we have never before had something that's been such a globally shared experience and things are different and it kind of sucks and there's lots of really big impacts. Uh, some of them which we have no idea and will reveal themselves over the next year, year and a half for many of us, right? That things are probably going to get worse before they get better. But what we also know is we are very resilient as human beings, as communities, as families, as countries, um, and things will. We, we are wired to not just survive, but thrive in the face of adversity. That's good, not just to survive, but thrive. And finally, it is about seeking professional help. And we've talked a lot about it on this show, but I, I do wanna say, how does one go about doing that? How yeah. who do you talk to to get a, like a meeting with somebody like you or a session with you? It used to yeah. be the GP. I don't it know how to do so it anymore. Yeah, if you have a trusted GP, absolutely, to see a psychologist or a registered counselor. One is you want to make sure you're seeing a regulated mental health professional, a registered psychologist, or a registered clinical counselor. Good old Google can really help us there, right? There's associations, so every province has um, uh, psychology associations, mental health uh, associations, and you can get a list of referrals and um, do some searches because it's also about fit and making sure that you feel like there's an alignment with the provider that you're finding. So I couldn't agree with you more. Jody. there's an alignment here. I'm so glad to speak to you finally. Stay well, and uh, I hope it looks like a bright and sunny day in Vancouver. Is that right? It's a beautiful day, and so lovely to chat with you, Marilyn, and I hope you and loved ones stay safe and healthy through this most unusual time. Thank you, Jody. Thank you for everything. We have to take a break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> 